Hi students. Some people have asked about this on the question document and in office hours and so I thought I'd come in and make a video explaining what I wrote in the um, question document because maybe it wasn't so clear. So here I know that the output of a cos inverse is an angle. So I can think of this as representing some angle A and this is representing some angle B. So this is really like saying sine of A minus B. And then I know from my formula that that's going to be sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. But also, if this is some angle A, it corresponds to a triangle that has a cosine ratio of root 2 over 2. So that's, of course, one of our exact ratios that you should know. But also, because it's a ratio, I've called that angle A. The adjacent side would be root 2 and the opposite side would be two, and Pythagorean theorem would tell me that this side is also root two. So now I know sine A is also root two over two. Over here for my angle B, I could do the same thing and make a triangle, but now I don't see a ratio, I see just a single number. Well, I'm gonna call that my opposite, and then I'm gonna make my hypotenuse one, because I can think of this as the ratio two X over one. That would then tell me that my adjacent side by Pythagorean theorem is going to be square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Wow, that's much higher than I wanted it to be. Let's make another one a bit lower. There we go. So that says 2x, even though it's a little bit uh, hard to see. So now I know cosine of b as well is going to be square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Now I can come in and fill everything in. So sine A root two over two, cos B is root one minus four X squared minus sine B, sine B is two X, <clears throat> cos A is root two over two. And so now I have a little bit of simplifying I can do, but not much. I could take this root two and multiply it in since it's all a square root. So I could call that root of two minus 8x squared all over 2 minus root 2x because over here the 2s would cancel. All right, so that is how you do this sort of problem. You should think about this anytime you see an inverse, that they've given you a ratio, but an inverse represents an angle. And then I can use my... Um, some indifference laws and my double angle laws to help me simplify. I hope that was helpful. As always, if you want videos on other types of problems, just let us know. We're happy to make them for you.